What up, everybody? It's April Dawn. Let's talk about it. This is American Horror Story Apocalypse Season 8, Episode 6. Woo! Man, this was like one of the best episodes. Just like last week, hands down, one of the best episodes of Apocalypse ever. Like, I'm loving the crossovers. I'm loving the flashbacks. I'm loving everything. I kind of feel like maybe we got a little off track from the bunker. But, you know, they're going to bring us back, so I ain't even worried about it. I lived. I mean, for me to see Jessica Lang. Is that that lady name? For me to see Jessica Lane one more time, like, I live. Yes, queen. Yes. She served us life. So let's go ahead and get into so it. We're going to start off. Behold, not pray tell. Pray tell, behold. Huh? Yes. Uh -huh. Behold, pray tell. No. But behold and Madison, they're buying the house, right? So they have to pretend that they, you know, are married child, which is an absolute unbelievable ass lie. She says a line about them being a fucked up seal and Heidi Klum, you know, and that was hilarious to me. As they walk into the house, they see Tate and Ben's, okay? Ben and Tate. I remember all these old character names. Tate and Ben, they basically having a therapy session. So his wife won't talk to him. They have been estranged for whatever reason. And Violet still won't talk to Tate for whatever reason, okay? Probably because he got her mama pregnant. I'm not, I don't know, baby. They, they, they walk into the house and they do a spell so that they can see the ghost. They Before they saw Ben and Tate, they do a spell so that they can see the ghost. Now, you know, um, Behold pull out his sage and, you know, his thyme, his rosemary, his tarragon powder and shit. You know what I'm saying? He cut his hand. They do a little spell with them herbs and seasoning. And, you know, they can see the ghost and the ghost can see them. So when they see them, you know, they're like, listen, we bought this house for y'all so y'all can do what y'all want. People want. People will leave you alone. And, you know, Ben tell them, look, he has to go cry and masturbate like he do every day. So when he ain't really got time to talk about this shit he don't want to talk about it he like what you gonna do make us more damage we dead already like the fuck like we not gonna do it he walks away and tate ain't got time he walks away so Bo comes out and he kind of attacks madison but it's more like a puppy like he wants to play and so he have the ball and as behold almost you know swoosh his ass um we see that billy dean whatever her name is howard billy jean howard billy dean howard she comes out okay and she's like hey watch yourself you know what i'm saying like don't be doing all this shit you don't want these ghosts to be mad at you they ain't as nice as bo is mm, all right and they like are you alive yes girl i'm alive i'm the only person they really let come up in and up out of here or whatever madison also makes a comment about tate being you know a romantic tragedy with him and violet the one person that he loved the most he cannot be ever with her or whatever so constance appears upstairs baby she turns around and gave me life and she says this is her effing house and i was like girl you better let them know constance i live honey for the bouffant and the cigarette and the drinks honey crown drinking brown that's what i'm talking about she's like are y'all gonna run down to the, to the koreans to the japanese to the Asian store and get me uh, my crown and my cigarettes. And then she like, you drink crown, bitch? I drink brown. What the fuck? What's up? Scott's is just fixing her drink. And, you know, they said that they are witches. And, you know, she dead. Okay? Like, Constance is dead. I had a feeling she was dead, though. Because I feel like she will be old as shit, right? Moira comes in. Moira tells her that the stuff is done. You know, the house is done. Constant goes to check for dust. And, you know, they go back and forth. And the, the shade, the ever-loving shade between them, like the everlasting, never-ending shade between them is just hilarious to me. And she's like, girl, you got one job, bitch. You got one job and you can't even do your job. And she was like, girl, I got one job and that's to sit on your husband's face. Okay, in the basement, girl, that's what I be doing. I be sitting on your husband's face. And they go back and forth. But Moira get her ass. She got the last word on her. I can't remember all what they were saying because it's late. But she was getting her ass. And she does say something about Constance taking the coward's way out. And when people usually say that, that usually means that you committed suicide. A Behold and Madison tell Constance they're looking for information on Michael Langdon. And uh, Billy says she ain't got nothing to say about this shit, okay? She she ain't got no comment on it. And Constance says she gonna spill all the tea, but she not gonna spill it for free. Okay, and she did say spill tea, honey. She actually said spill tea. So she's going to, she wants them to get rid of Moira forever. She tired of being with her ass. And then they'll talk about Michael. 
So we see Behold digging for bones in the front yard. You know it's a thousand damn people that done got killed in that house. So it's probably enough bones for a million people. And Madison is, you know, looking at the, checking the vibrations and all of that. And she was like, this is not it. Keep on digging. And he like, girl, listen, I got a spell to just banish her ass to the closet. She will never have to see her again. She was like, no. You can see that Madison is really trying to like, I ain't going to say turn over a new leaf. But, you know, she done got her life back like three damn times at this point. So she trying to do a little bit right, right by the lady so they make it back to the kitchen and they have five more of us bones now they tell her girl no nobody like you up in this bitch you know what i'm saying we got your bones where do you want to be buried and she like i want to be buried you know next to my mother you know so they bury her in a cemetery right by her mother and this was a very touching scene i'm not gonna lie to y'all and a nice ending to a character she sees her mom her dead mom and she said her mom i want to apologize to you because i killed you i pulled the plug on your life support and her mom was like i just wanted to smother you with kisses because i was in agony and you you know you saved me you made me feel better so they walk off into the afterlife together that was like one of the nicest most tenderest moments i ever seen even Madison had got a little, she had got a little choked up when they gave her the bones and she hugged her or whatever. Even Madison got a little piece of heart. And you know, uh, Behold noticed that he was like, you be trying to act like a hard ass, but you really do got you a little heart or something under there, girl. I see you, girl. Moira is gone, so Constance is ready to give her monologue. So she's talking about how Michael was her second chance, her at life, it was her do-over, you know. Um, so she took care of him. The father is Tay. She's the grandmother. And she says he was her destiny. You know, even when he started doing unspeakable acts like pulling the, the wings off of flies or something like that, he killed rodents when he was young. And she said, I done watch enough ID channels to know, child, he's a damn serial killer. She already knew what was coming up next. So he started killing small animals and saying that they were presents to show his love for her. And we see her, like, pulling dead animals. I'm like, how the fuck... How the hell did Liberty ass boy hang these animals from the ceiling in the kitchen? So I don't know. But he's but she pulled him down. She said every time he killed an animal, she planted in the garden, you know, a rosebud. But after a while, she was like, I'm so tired of looking at damn roses, I can never see one again, okay? Michael made her realize her destiny that she was born and she was supposed to raise monsters. So she kind of leaned into it, you know. After she see the cat, she just, like I said, she just rolling with it. She already know he going to be a serial killer. Um, Then he killed his babysitter. That's when she started going left. She was like, oh, my God. She told the cops that the lady killed herself. I don't know too many people who slit their throat, but y'all let me know. She said, you know, like I said, she thought he was going to be a garden variety serial killer. No big deal, right? No big deal. This one shit went to the left, left. To the left, left, okay? She said she woke up, he was late for school one morning, and she went in his room, and he had aged 10 years overnight. I said, I know you lying. What? I would have packed my bag and left. The first time I would have seen him kill some animals, I would have put dropped him off. Okay, I would have dropped him off right in front of the police station and, and peaced out. You got me fucked up. No, absolutely not. You're not about to kill me in my sleep. Leads me to the next point. Um, She wakes up in the middle of the night and he strangles her ass and he almost kills her and he asks for a glass of water. And she like, may I? You know, now can I have a glass of water? May I have a glass of water? She was scared as hell, okay? She was scared of the mug. She called a priest. She was like, you know, we need divine intervention. I just knew, you know, he was going to kill me, girl. If I had corrected his English one more time, he was going to choke me up. It just was over for me. Cancel Christmas. So we had to call in the Lord for this one, honey. And let me tell you, he called in the Lord and, and he killed the priest, child. And was just sitting there giddy, happy. I think he was playing video games, if I'm not mistaken. So after he killed the priest, she said, bitch, I'm out. Okay, she like, bitch, I'm done. She felt like Michael made her believe that she mattered. She, like I said, she said if she would have corrected him one more time, he would have killed her. So she said, I'm not going to let no man control my destiny. I've done that my whole life. So she goes next door. She put on some music. She smoked her some cigarettes, honey. She fixed her a drink. And she take a whole bunch of sleeping pills. And she kills herself in the house, she said, because she knew the company. She knew what she was getting into at this point. And uh, she wanted to be with her children. Everybody but Addie. If y'all don't remember from the first season, Addie got hit by a car. And she tried to drag her into the lawn so she would die on the property. But she was already dead before they got to the property. Thank God for Addie, okay? She finally got the rest in peace. She got the rest in peace with her little boyfriend. She wanted to be with her children. So she decided to be in that house. Now, you know if you're a ghost in this house, 
you can't be seen by the ghost or the ghost you can't see the ghost unless they want you to see them she said she never wanted to see michael again so at this time the her little girl now constance always said she had four kids but we never knew who the other kid was so i guess this little girl's supposed to be the other child she comes her eyes are like totally hollowed out we don't know what happened with her we don't know what's the story now we probably won't ever find out but she says mommy it's tea time so she says oh i'm sorry you know i'm on my way so she goes on to be with her family and that's the end of constance's part of the story then we go back to ben we see ben masturbating and crying in the window and madison behold wants to talk to him about michael so they tell him they can make his impulse stop and he said he don't really want to stop masturbating he just want to stop crying child ben is a whole mess okay he need to be having therapy sessions with iyanla to fix his damn life okay because he's the mess or his death child he says when constance died this is the first time he saw michael and he revealed himself to michael and so he said he told michael that constance don't want to see him but he wants to help him and he feels like they can have therapy sessions so he took over um you know with therapy sessions with him and they started to talk and he could see that michael wanted to be good he tried to cater to him and they was playing games together he was a simple boy he was brilliant and he started to feel like a father to michael even though you know his wife had michael i mean and you know that was not his son or whatever he said he wanted to give him everything one day michael was in tate's room looking through his stuff and tate come through the room like get away from my stuff like leave my stuff alone and he's like i just want to be like you dad i just want to like you i have to same haircut as you right it looks like justin bieber and he was like you ain't my damn son even i couldn't make nothing as evil as you is boy i don't know what they told you you ain't come from this nut set i don't play with you we not we don't do that i'm not your daddy i am not the pappy michael just falls out on the bed like <laughs> that shit was funny how he fell in that bed y'all he was like <gasps> i was like michael you need to stop and um, Ben says this is when he started seeing Michael really turn to the dark side. Obviously, in the house, there's a lot of different horrible ghosts. And so, you know, he started hanging with the wrong crowd, for lack of a better term. We see him slicing up the Black Dahlia face in the basement. We see him really going wild. Then the house sells. It sells to this gay couple, a lesbian couple, interracial couple. Child, they didn't even get one, two good feet in the dough for Michael kill both of their ass. And so, he says... Why did you do that? You know, they're going to be here forever. And he was like, they don't belong here. He was like, well, they're going to be here forever. You killed them. And so then Michael, like, burns their soul up. He said, so not only did he kill them, he made them cease to exist. Like, they gone forever. After that, he realizes that Michael can never be helped. Like, Michael is just a lost cause, child. He could never do nothing for him. It was fruitless. And so, you know, this is the one rejection, last rejection that Michael could not take. So when he was talking about Mead, you know, not uh, rejecting him or never being anybody to betray him, this is what he's talking about. And so uh, Madison is like, because Cordelia will know what to do. And, you know, uh, Cordelia, um, then we see, um, what's the lady name, child? Veronica Vivian. Then we see Vivian reveals herself and says it won't be that easy. And then she started talking about, uh she was well, she and uh ben they kind of reconcile a little bit and the baby you know the other baby forever baby started crying she like go on tend to your real son nigga like go on tend to your son he needs you and uh she tells the girls that i mean she tells the you know yeah she tells the girls that michael is not just a bad wish they can get rid of and then she started quoting the book of revelations honey about the ten horns and you know everybody on the world gonna worship him i said wait a minute jesus 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 jesus, jesus build a fence all around me every day oh my god i was about to sing a, a spiritual okay i was like mm -mm, don't be quoting the bible now this tv okay just remember this is just tv so we come back and she says there's nothing natural about michael she noticed that strange stuff started happening like the circle of crows around the house the sweltering heat obviously he's the son of the damn devil so you know he's you know it's hot in the house all the time and so I, my DVR started messing up at this point. But what I could gather from the reviews and the articles that I read said that this is when Mead and like two other people from like the Satan people come and they sacrifice this girl, this young virgin, and they make him eat her heart. He eats the heart. And, you know, now he all with them. And he tries to kill Vivian. Well, Vivian decided that night, first Vivian didn't take it serious. But, you know, she decided to kill him that night. He had to go. And when she tried to kill him, he was awake and he tried to burn her up. But Tate saved her. So, um, 
No, that's when Vivian was like, I ain't, I ain't fucking with him no more. I'm done with the whole situation. So as they're leaving, you know, I'm, uh, behold, it's like, listen, if I had known, we had known all this, we would not be trying to make him our supreme. We need to get back and immediately tell everybody what's going on. So uh, as they're leaving, um, Madison blows something into Violet's face to let him know that basically um, Tate is not his father. Whatever evil the house has or the devil or whatever you want to call it is his father. And Tate was just a host. So once he, you know, skeeted, for lack of a better term, okay, all the evil that was in him went into this young, went into Michael. So he's not evil anymore. Plus, coupled with the fact that he did save her mama, um, Violet, you know, embraces him. And they, you know, head to head in the window and all of that. So um, that was a cute little ending to another happy ending, y'all. This it was a great episode, and I'm sure next week either we're going to be back in the bunker, we're going to be back. I don't know if it's going to be more flashbacks. Um, I hope it's not another whole flashback episode. I didn't see the preview, so I don't know. But um, I thought it was a great episode. Um, Sarah Paulson directed this episode. She did a fantastic job. The lighting when um, more of her mom were walking into the afterlife was really nice because it was light on one side and dark on the other side. That was dope. Um, I like Violet's character you know and Tate's character basically ending um I just like seeing everything and how it all came together I mean Jessica Lang is just the queen of American Horror Story like we can't live without her like I low-key just want them to have a whole <laughs> series on Murder House like I just I love it so I want to hear your thoughts about this episode don't forget to like comment and subscribe share this video with all your friends I am about to go to sleep y'all I am worn out um know that the videos will be late this month uh, I know I keep saying this but these are for my new viewers I am in a play so I have rehearsal every night except for Monday nights so I'm not even home when these shows come on I'm always catching them later the next day in the morning in the evening whenever I can so I'm gonna have try to have them up to you before the weekend is up or at least on the weekend okay so just save me for your weekend workout all right i will holla at y'all next week peace